Hi, my name is Wendy Wicker and I'm with the Transnational NGO Leadership Institute. The Transnational NGO Leadership Institute has been launched by the Maxwell School this fall. It's a leadership preparedness program geared towards transnational NGO leaders, in particular those who currently work at the second tier of leadership in their organizations and who wish to prepare themselves for top leadership. The program benefits both professionals seeking top NGO leadership positions and organizations who are mindful about securing a successful leadership succession and transition. I am fortunate today to be having a brief interview with Josephine Namusisi, who is a participant in the Transnational NGO Leadership Institute this year. Josephine is the uh, resident program manager for uh, the National Democratic Institute based in South Sudan. Uh, thank you for allowing us to interview you today. And this is going to be a very helpful tool for our practitioners and the faculty that are interested in questions of leadership preparation, transition, and succession. Mm. So I'd like to ask you a few questions. Thank you. First, could you share with us the nature and mission of your organization? Um, first of all, I must say thank you very much for inviting me to this interview. I must say that I've been greatly honored to be part of this first cohort of the um, Maxwell School of um, Political Maxwell School of Citizenship, Citizenship and Public Affairs mm -hmm. on the Transnational NGO Institute. The nature of the organization I work for actually has its roots from America. It's an American democratic, National Democratic Institute for International Affairs um, with its headquarters based in Washington, D.C. And the mission of the organization is pretty much geared towards building citizen participation in political processes, um, supporting electoral processes in over 10 countries around the world. And I'm privileged to be part of the C program and systems for South and Eastern Africa pro uh, regional program, particularly based in South Sudan in Juba. Mm -hmm. And that is where I carry out my work. We are headed by a senior resident country director who is a citizen, a senior citizen of uh, the United States of America, Dr. Richard Nutio. Mm -hmm. And actually, I've served at the Institute for about seven months to date now, yeah. That's great. Could you tell us how you got involved in transnational activism and how you have become a leader in your organization? Uh, my participation in transnational activism actually um, runs far back in several many other years where, when I worked with several other organizations, uh, both in my country in Uganda where I originate from and also in South Sudan. Uh, back in my country, I participated a lot on the democracy monitoring group um, kind of consortium where we were trying to monitor democratic processes in, in Uganda. And I was a director, one of the directors in that consortium, and I gained a lot of experience on democratic processes. I also gained a lot of experience from a USAID-funded um, project on, that was working on promoting um, the capacity, capacity building of um, the, the legislature in our country. I was the deputy chief of party on that program and um, also an outreach, an NGO outreach specialist that gave me an opportunity to work with NGOs that w had a legislative agenda with the legislative assembly in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And based on this background, I moved to South Sudan and I started working with communities, trying to organize them into understanding how to start getting engaged into the processes of the post-CPS, uh, uh, the the CPA was the, um, yeah, the, the, the agreement that, uh, led, uh, that ended the war in South Sudan, mm -hmm. the Comprehensive Peace Agreement. Mm -hmm. And in trying to implement the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, people needed to get organized into ways of trying to identify their problems and how to work on participating into the development of the country. And along the process, we were supposed to, or my, part of my work was engaged with getting people to try to demand or to start to demand for accountability from some of the funding that was coming from the oil monies that were given to the government of South Sudan and several other things that the people of South Sudan needed. Uh, from there, then I started, uh, I moved on to another organization that was dealing with health issues and um, I was the country director on that program actually the country manager, and uh, we were engaged with developing proce uh, policy processes on the health systems and promoting 
um, health systems in South Sudan. And one special thing about this program was that it was based on performance-based financing and, um, and, other, and other promoting health-seeking behaviors because after the war, the people in South Sudan were not so much into, um, they didn't have the habit of getting into the health systems, mm -hmm. uh, normal health systems. And this was part of my work. And this is partly how I started getting engaged into the process. And during the process, we encouraged them to register and vote for the, uh, for the first elections of South Sudan and ultimately for the referendum that ushered the country into independence. Mm -hmm. And it was around that time that I made a move to the National Democratic Institute where I'm fully working now. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Can you tell us more about the upcoming Leadership league, Leap that you're currently preparing for? Um, I shouldn't say that there is a specific career leap that I'm preparing for, but I must say that um, I'm eagerly waiting for a leap to be able to contribute more to promoting governance processes in South Sudan and other countries where my services, um, I'm sure, are, are, are required, either vertically or horizontally, as well as, as long as I can contribute to the mission of the National Democratic Institute in a very, in a very, in a very positive and strong way. This is what I'm looking for, and especially to polish up my leadership styles. And I must say that this course has been fantastic in terms of reflecting on our leadership styles, the styles of the people we might be working with, how to engage with them, how to work with them in order to be able to get maximum results as much as possible. Yeah. So what distinguishes top leaders from leaders at the second tier of responsibility in your organization, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, really, I, I, I must say that what distinguishes top leadership from the middle leadership is the kind of contact and the kind of responsibility. The top leadership, uh, to me, I think they're focusing a little bit more on the strategic level and mobilization of funds and, um, and uh, public, uh, public um, relations and things of that kind. I'm not saying that the next level doesn't do that, but it doesn't do that as much as the top leadership does it. The next level of the leadership more focuses on getting into the real kind of work with the different constituencies with which we relate in specific countries and the regions in which we work. And to me, I find this very critical because both, of the, both levels of uh, engagement are very important and they contribute quite a lot to our work in building democracies around the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what challenges to your, is your organization facing at this moment in regard to leadership succession and transition, and how is your organization dealing with these challenges? Um, personally, just like I've told you, I've just worked for the National Democratic Institute for seven months. Mm -hmm. I might not be the right person in the best position to be able to to explain the leadership challenges, succession challenges that my, my organization is going through. But what I know is that, um, and what I've observed in the period I've worked for NDI is that it gives an opportunity, and it is an organization that really is really open to providing opportunities for people to grow, either within the country programs where they operate, or in other countries around the world. And I mean, it's really, I, I have found it to be a very democratic institution. And to me, I think even in terms of leadership succession, I'm sure something, and by promoting this kind of openness and free movement and ma as much learning as possible, that reflects probably internally what has been done in long term about the succession plan. But as I've told you, what I've seen is already enough to show me that they are open to building, to building their, their staff into very strong leaders. Because I've just joined them and they've given me this opportunity to come here. They have given me the time. They have contributed to my, to my fair to be here and all these things. And of course, the Maxwell School, which has given me partial scholarship. I mean, all this shows that there is an openness to, to, to ensuring that there is, that the, the people are empowered to grow in an institution. And when it comes to succession, I do not think NDA would find it very difficult to find people to succeed, people in specific top leadership positions. Yeah. 
So you have shared um, some of your appreciations of what you've taken from this course, but um, maybe you could just share with us a little more about some of the most important lessons or skills you think you've learned from our Leadership Institute thus far. Um, the Leadership Institute, like I've told you, it, it has really refreshed me on, 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 many, on many fronts. Uh, and I've, uh, as I've explained, I've held high positions in the past. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that I'm holding a low position, mm -hmm. but it's a step, place, a step lower to refresh and to, to reflect and to learn a little bit more and to energize before I take up another leadership, you know, leap. And this is one of the greatest achievements, so the greatest uh, benefits that um, I've gained from this, this, this institute. It has been extremely rewarding in terms of giving a reflection about the leaps, the, the, the leaps in the leadership, you know, advancements. And these have been, I've found these very, 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 very rewarding and very helpful to me, yeah. Thanks. Well, it's been great having you here at our institute and we're so glad that you came and thank you for letting us interview you today. Thank you.